Okay, uh, what are now for eco-design requirements the criteria and what is the process uh, leading to their adoption? Um, in the ESPR text, there is a number of um, negative criteria. So basically, some um, some things eco-design requirements should not uh, uh, should not be against. Yeah? For example, uh, eco-design requirements should not have any significant negative impact on the functionality of the product. Uh, so I think it's it's pretty much a no-brainer, but it's good that this is um, this is being clarified. And also some other um, adverse effects should be avoided, of course, like health and safety, um, or affordability for consumers should be kept in mind, uh, and things like that. So it's it's like a list of pretty obvious uh, uh, negative criteria, which is are nevertheless good to to keep in mind and, and reflect in the in the legal text. And then for the process leading to eco design requirements, um, we have some uh, some generic steps. So everything starts with a work program where the commission sets out uh, these are the products we want to work on for the next uh, three years. Um, then um, there are usually preparatory studies and uh, impact assessment for the prioritized products. Um, and in the next step, then these will be uh, discussed um, um, in, in the so-called Echo Design Forum, uh, which includes uh, various uh, stakeholders, including also from, from industry, NGOs, and so on. And this Echo Design Forum now also has a, uh, a member states authority uh, expert group, which is also like a, a separate part under this new Echo Design a forum uh, to to hold some uh, confidential discussions also uh, relating to the the implementation uh, of ESPR and and the adoption of of eco design uh, measures so and all this process then eventually leads to the adoption uh, of uh, of um, eco design measures and once adopted um then they uh, would enter into force after uh, a minimum period of 18 months to give uh, of course industry also some time uh, to uh, to to implement those those measures but uh, industry can see uh, those measures coming because uh, the the process is foreseen to be fairly transparent and the stakeholders including industry are able to provide their input so this is partly already ongoing uh, for like examples like um, mainly textile products at this point where the, the preparatory study uh, is already already ongoing uh, with view to eco design uh, measures. So please uh, keep that in mind that uh, stakeholder input is very uh, important here uh, already in the lead to the, uh, the setting of, of eco design requirements. Um, okay, but what are the different types of eco design requirements? Um, we have two types. Uh, one is a performance requirement, and the other type is information requirements. Uh, and here again, we can um, we have th two different forms for each. Um, we have product specific uh, requirements, which would apply yeah per product group. And maybe further uh, specified uh, uh, for for specific products in that group. Uh, and on the other hand, we have uh, horizontal uh, requirements. And those uh, horizontal requirements may cover uh, several product groups uh, which have sufficient technical commonalities. Yeah. So, and this uh, is this, uh, still or uh, quite an open question to what extent. Um, the Commission may want to use these uh, horizontal requirements to, to regulate uh, under ESPR across different product groups. Uh, of course, another question is also what are considered to be sufficient technical commonalities. But yeah, other than that, uh, so for the performance requirements, uh, these ta can take the form of uh, quantitative uh, uh, requirements uh, like thresholds, uh, for example, minimum recycled content. Uh, they can also be non-quantitative, for example, they can take the form of a, a restriction uh, of uh, substances which are inhibiting uh, circularity. And on the other hand, we have the the information requirements, and and these uh, uh, will uh, include at least uh, requirements on the digital product passport, 
uh, for regulated products and also requirements governing uh, substances uh, of concern and uh, information to be uh, transmitted for, for those. Uh, and beyond that, there can be also additional information as, uh, as deemed uh, appropriate uh, concerning the, the product, its handling and uh, of recycling. Thank you.